Jeremy, good to see you. Welcome to Popternative. Thanks very much. Good to chat with you. I mean, here's the thing, and you can relate this question to a lot of things you worked on, but we're talking about animals up close specifically. I'm watching this, and there's this push and pull the whole time of, from the entertainment perspective and the immersive perspective, just seeing all these incredible you know, visuals and these animals and it's breathtaking and I'm enjoying it, but I'm also learning about these animals as well. So this push and pull of the entertainment aspect of it and the education learning aspect of it for you being kind of there on the kind of filmmaking perspective, what's that mindset like for you? Do you think about that at all? Cause I find that interesting. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I think uh, there's a phrase that stuck with me for, for a long time, Courtney Monroe, who heads up national geographic channels, I went to a presentation that she gave and she said that the key with National Geographic programming is that smart and entertaining don't have to be mutually exclusive. Um, and, and I think that's what I love about, about, you know, natural history, wildlife filmmaking is that, that it's, it's so easy to, to do that. And, you know, um, that's, yeah, that's, that's really what I focus on. And how big are the conversations with producers, your team in terms of like, where you're going to go, which animals are going to be kind of showcased. Like, I'm just curious about that. Like, are they big yeah, so Zoom meetings? <laughs> there's some big Zoom meetings, yes. Some long <laughs> Zoom meetings. I mean, just never mind the, like, the storytelling side of things, just the logistics involved. Um, you know, I am part... You know, when when you when you're the host of a show, you get way too much credit than you deserve. I am a part of a massive team as a production company in, in Bristol, where I live, that that makes the show called Wild Star Films. And yeah, we have a huge team of experts that work together uh, to, to to make it all happen. Um, uh, I was also going to say that you know, while so much planning goes into this, Mother Nature, the animals, they don't read the script. Um, and so everything often goes completely out the window as soon as we get there in terms of our our planned story. Uh, but yeah, so, so, sometimes sometimes we get it right. I mean, in the case of the the Patagonia Puma episode, which is the first episode of my favorite, we went with a very specific goal. We went to try and find one particular puma. She's called Pataka. Um, and we went to find her because I have known her since she was a cub. So I met her for the first time four years ago. So I wanted to catch up to see how how she was doing. So yeah, that was that was our goal. We went with the plan to find one particular puma and see how she was doing. And of course, then she we we found her and and she tore up our script and and took us in a totally different direction. And you you know, and this kind of has to do with with what you said because it sounds like you just love sometimes the unpredictability of a lot of things. But I feel like you've been doing this wildlife kind of filmmaking for a while and everything, and it's so layered. I feel like people don't realize how more, more complex and layered it is. And there's so many different things about it. Is there well, one thing I have, you love the most about it specifically? Well, I think in answer to your question of the layers of it, I think that's one thing I love about the format of this show because yeah. hybrid, right? It's, it's, it's the wildlife behavior alongside our struggles to keep up with the animals. So I hope it gives a bit of an insight into, into, into what, what goes in, but sorry, I cut you off. What was your question? Well, my question is like, is the actual, like, because uh, you, you, you confirmed a lot of zoom meetings and you know i just want <laughs> we find that interesting but like is the planning something that excites you like planning everything like where you're gonna go and everything or like do you really just love got, like doing it filming it being up close with these animals like i'm yeah, just curious I mean, if there's I like the uh, like do you like them equally or uh, i definitely prefer being next to the animals as opposed to on zoom at home um i mean someone's uh, cat might show up <laughs> i mean at least you have that yeah. right <laughs> yeah, yeah totally uh, um i i think the thing that i love about it is that wildlife filming is 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 like whilst getting to hang out with cool animals is is a part of it and that is definitely what excites me most most of the job is is problem solving and logistics um, and I love that challenge and working with an amazing team of specialists um, to, to figure out how best to film something. I mean, as just a, one example, in, in our forest elephant episode, um, it's called Elephant Quest. We went to the Central African Republic mm -hmm. to film elephants that are forest elephants. So savannah elephants are probably the elephants people are more familiar with. They live in big, wide open plains alongside lions and things. Forest elephants, as their name suggests, live in the jungle. They really don't like people um, because we, well, humans have a pretty bad history with them. A lot of poaching for their for their tusks, for their ivory. So they don't like people. And so to problem solve that, 
we needed to respect that personal space because we want to film them relaxed. So we actually lived off the forest floor in the jungle canopy. Um, so we had two rope experts with us, Meg Donaldson and, and Waldo Etherington, and they basically built this amazing tree house, 120 foot up a sapili tree in the jungle. Uh, and they set up all these zip lines through the, the canopy. It was like triggering all my 13 year old boy fantasies of living in trees. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's just one example of how we overcame a problem. Uh, it's problem. Yeah. It was definitely yeah. problem solving. I mean, that's, you can see it too with like the conversations and up close and everything. And, you know, people are going to be able to see Natural Geographic's Animals Up Close with Bernie Gregory, uh, September 13th on Disney+. Plus. Bernie, it was really great chatting with you. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.